Today, with one clear voice, the United States of America calls upon the nations of the world to end religious persecution. <laughs>
They've been trying to get Andrew out for a long time, previous administration. I don't think they tried too hard, unfortunately. But I want to thank President Erdogan, and I want to thank you, Pastor, for being here with us today. Where is Andrew? Is he around someplace? Thank you, Andrew. We did a good job with that negotiation, Andrew. You got back. It wasn't easy. It wasn't pretty, but you got back. And we're proud of you. You have a great family. And the love when Andrew came back, the love from so many people, it was actually I hadn't seen anything quite like it. So congratulations, and I understand you're doing fantastic work with your family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. And I also want to thank Franklin Graham, because he's been so in instrumental in uh, everything we're doing. He's done such an incredible job in so many different ways, including floods and hurricanes. And every time I go, I see Franklin there. He's always there before me. I don't know how he gets there before me. I'm going to beat him one day, but he's always at these places of, of uh, really disaster areas. He's right there with an incredible large staff of volunteers that are just amazing. Thank you very much. And Cece, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. And Paula White, thank you very much. In July, I met with survivors of religious persecution at the White House, and we're honored that many of them could be here today as well. Some of these individuals suffered as a result of state-sponsored persecution, others at the hands of terrorists and criminals. No matter the case, America will always be a voice for victims of religious persecution everywhere. No matter where you go, you have a place in the United States of America. Could I ask those folks to stand up, please? Please stand up. Thank you. Thank you very much. In recent times, the world has also witnessed devastating acts of violence in sacred places of worship. In 2016, an 85-year-old Catholic priest was viciously killed while celebrating Mass in Normandy, France. In the past year, the United States endured horrifying anti-Semitic attacks against Jewish Americans at synagogues in Pennsylvania and California. In March, Muslims praying with their families were sadistically murdered in New Zealand. On Easter Sunday this year, terrorists bombed Christian churches in Sri Lanka, killing hundreds of faithful worshipers. Who would believe this is even possible? These evil attacks are a wound on all humanity. We must all work together to protect communities of every faith. We're also urging every nation to increase the prosecution and punishment of crimes against religious communities. There can be no greater crime than that. This includes measures to prevent the intentional destruction of religious sites and relics. Today, the Trump administration will dedicate an additional $25 million to protect religious freedom and religious sites and relics. We're also pleased to be joined today by many of the partners from the business community as we announce a very critical initiative. The United States is forming a coalition of U.S. businesses for the protection of religious freedom. This is the first time this has been done. This initiative will encourage the private sector to protect people of all faiths in the workplace. And the private sector has brilliant leadership. That's why some of the people in this room are among the most successful men and women on Earth. They know how things get done, and they know how to take care of things, and they're with us now for the first time to this extent, first time ever. And we're really honored to have you in the room. Great business leaders, great people of strength. Too often, people in positions of power preach diversity while silencing, shunning, or censoring the faithful. True tolerance means respecting the right of all people to express their deeply held religious beliefs. Before I conclude, I want to once again thank all of the survivors in the room for their courage and resilience. You're an inspiration to the world. You remind us that no force 
on earth is stronger than the faith of religious believers. The United States of America will forever remain at your side and the side of all of those who seek religious freedom. Today, I ask all nations to join us in this urgent moral duty. We ask the governments of the world to honor the eternal right of every person to follow their conscience, live by their faith, and give glory to God. The United States has a vital role in this critical mission. Secretary General Guterres will now share a few words on the UN's efforts to promote religious liberty for all. And he has been a champion of exactly what we're in this room for. So I want to thank everybody for being here. God bless you. God bless the faithful. And God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>